On the 17th of March 2023, following a trial, you, Drake Drummond, were convicted of the murder of Jacob Lennon on the 27th of August 2019. Jacob was a child and only 15 months old when he died. You were also convicted of wounding Jacob in the period leading up to his death. At the time of the offences, you were 29 years old. You're now 33. You had received a warning for threats to kill in 2005, and in 2008, a caution for common assault. You have anger management issues and can be intimidating and violent towards women. Prior to this offending, there was nothing to suggest that you were a threat to children. It was clear on the evidence that you are emotionally volatile and at times obsessively jealous and self-centered. Your volatility was made worse by long-standing drug use, which had increased at the time of the offences, and your continuing arguments with your former partner, the mother of your own children. Louise Lennon, Jacob was your son. You were convicted of causing or allowing his death at the hands of Jake Drummond. During the trial, you pleaded guilty to child cruelty at the conclusion of your evidence. By your plea, you accepted that you should have obtained medical help for Jacob when it was obvious that he needed it. You are now 32 years of age and had just turned 29 when Jacob died. You have no relevant previous convictions. At the time of the offences, you were a single mother with two young children living in your own flat. You've had a number of toxic relationships with men. You and your family were under the supervision of the social services, and you were, on all accounts, making good progress. You'd met Jake Drummond when you were much younger. You were in contact with him in the summer of 2019 to see whether he could supply you with drugs. This was a feature of your relationship as it deepened and then became intimate. By the end of July and into August, Jake Drummond was a regular visitor to your flat, staying overnight. But just after 6 a.m. on the morning of the 27th of August, you made a call to the emergency services to request an ambulance for Jacob. You said that he must have hit his head and was not breathing. The account that both of you gave then and subsequently that Jacob had fallen out of his cot was clearly a lie. By the time the ambulance arrived, Jacob was not breathing. His heart had stopped. He could not be resuscitated and he was pronounced dead at hospital. It was immediately apparent to the medical professionals who were treating him that Jacob had a constellation of injuries which appeared to be non-accidental. An inquest established that Jacob's injuries included a number of trauma traumatic brain injuries, three in all, the last of which had been fatal and may have been inflicted by shaking. The medical evidence was that some of the injuries were up to a few weeks old. Some were caused in the few days preceding death. The fatal injury itself was at least three to five hours old. Jacob must have been unconscious for some hours before he received any treatment. There were some 20 marks of recent injury to the area of Jacob's head, neck and face. There were multiple injuries to the upper and lower limbs and to the trunk of his body. A number of these injuries were consistent with gripping. Others indicated the use of traumatic force such as a blow. There was an injury to the frenella, a part of the soft tissue within the mouth, as well as the lips. Jacob's eyes contained clear evidence of significant trauma, as did his brain. There was a gaping three centimetre laceration to the base of Jacob's penis, which in the opinion of the pathologist was caused by forceful pinching or possibly a bite. It was still bleeding at the time of death. There was a penetrating injury to the right side of his scrotum, which must have been caused by a sharp implement, such as a knife. Uh, these wounds to the genitals were the subject of the count to wounding offence. The fact that Jacob had been subject to repeated abuse in the few weeks before his death 
was evident from the photographs that you, Louise Lennon, took of his injuries at various points during that period. His appearance is truly shocking. When your, fr your friend Shannon visited on the 23rd of August, she was appalled. Jacob's eyes were bruised and swollen, and she described his head as looking like a basketball. By that stage, much of Jacob's hair had been removed when hair removal cream had been applied to his head for no proper purpose. Uh, you lied to your friend and to others about whether you had sought medical assistance. You told further contrived lies to your social worker in order to put off her visits, and you did not disclose that you were in a relationship with Jake Drummond. I should make it clear that in my view there can be no basis for any criticism of the social services in this case. The messages that Jake Drummond sent to you included some which are chilling in their tone, referring to the torture room in a context which can only have been a reference to Jacob's bedroom. Jacob clearly did not like Jake Drummond, as was apparent from text messages between you. Perhaps the most haunting photograph is not one of those which show injury, but that taken on the 12th of August 2029, when Jacob appears completely well, a bright and cheerful toddler. Less than a fortnight later, he was dead. This case involves a vulnerable and defenceless young child being subjected to brutal assaults by you, Jake Drummond, which culminated in his death. The circumstances were such that you, Louise Lennon, as his mother, must have been well aware of what was going on as your child accumulated injuries. Count one, murder. The sentence must be one of life imprisonment, Jake Drummond, and you will receive a sentence of imprisonment for life. The issue I have to determine is the minimum term you must serve before you are first considered for release. This is what that means. Once the minimum term expires, you will only be released if the parole board consider it safe and appropriate to release you. If they do not, you will remain in prison. You will have to serve the whole of the minimum term before you can apply for release. The parole board cannot direct your release before that term is at an end. If you are released from this sentence, you will be on license for the rest of your life and can be returned to prison at any time. In arriving at the minimum term, I have to assess the seriousness of the offence, which in this case involves a combination of the offence of murder and the offence associated with it of wounding with intent. The first step is to choose one of the starting points under Schedule 21 of the Sentencing Act and then to consider any aggravating or mitigating factors. I consider that this is an offence of particularly high seriousness within paragraph 3.1 and 3.2e of Schedule 21. This provides a starting point for the minimum term of 30 years. That is because it involved a course of conduct of a deliberate, cruel, cruel and sadistic nature. There was a pattern of behaviour. The penile and scrotal injuries can only be explained as sadistic in nature. They must have been excruciatingly painful. The other injuries show a deliberate course of conduct involving gratuitous violence. Having chosen that initial starting point, I need to consider the effect of any aggravating and mitigating factors. In terms of aggravating factors, I have taken care not to double count. The aggravating factors are your previous offending, the fact that Jacob was young and vulnerable, the extreme mental or physical suffering you inflicted on him, and your failure to seek prompt medical assistance for him. The fact that you sought to put the blame on Louise Lennon is a further aggravating feature. This was a cowardly, final attempt by you to escape the consequences of what you had done. As far as mitigation is concerned, I am prepared to accept that your intention was to cause serious bodily harm rather than to kill. However, that distinction cannot count for much in this case. You were responsible for the deterioration in Jacob's condition to the point where he was badly injured and fragile on the night on which he died. I make some reduction nevertheless. 
I bear in mind problems with your mental health and that you have never served a custodial sentence before being remanded in relation to this offence. I recognise that you've not found your time on remand easy. I've read your letter and references. Uh, Jake Drummond, for the murder of Jacob Lennon, I sentence you to life imprisonment. Having regard to all the matters I've set out, the minimum term will be one of 32 years, less the 541 days you've already spent in custody on remand. If that calculation is found to be erroneous, it can be corrected administratively without the need for a further hearing. Count two, wounding with intent. I have to follow the guidance issued by the Sentencing Council for this and the other offences which now follow. In my view, this offence falls within Category 3A. It is Category A high culpability because Jacob was obviously vulnerable due to his very young age. Uh, this is a case of Category 3 harm given the level of injury. Injuries of this nature inflicted on a child were shocking and particularly serious. Uh, this provides a starting point of five years imprisonment with a sentencing range of four to seven years custody. Aggravating features include your previous convictions, your position of trust, the commission of an offence whilst under the influence of alcohol and drugs, and your attempts to blame others. I sentence you to six years imprisonment to run concurrently. Uh, count three, causing or allowing the death of a child under Section 5 of the Domestic Violence Crime and Victims Act 2004. Uh, this is the first offence on the indictment which concerns you, Louise Lennon. Uh, you allowed Jacob's death by failing to take reasonable steps to protect him from the risk of serious harm being caused to him by Jake Drummond. This is a Category 1 harm offence as death resulted. I consider that it falls into Category B1 with a starting point of nine years custody and a sentencing range of seven to 14 years. The aggravating features are the prolonged suffering which Jacob had to endure prior to death. It may only have been 12 days as a matter of calculation, but that must have seemed a very long time to a child who was suffering as he was. Also, your attempts to cover up or conceal the offence by lying to your social worker and your close friends and your family, as well as the lies you've told to the paramedics and at the hospital, and then in your first interview to the police. That included blaming your older son for the genital injury. Uh, you must have been well aware of that injury when you were changing and dressing Jacob. His visibly worsening condition plainly indicated that he was subject to repeated physical abuse. I do not take the view that you were subject to any degree of coercive control by Jake Drummond. Having listened to your evidence and on the basis of the copious exchanges of messages between you, uh, which demonstrate a quite different relationship, one which you prioritised ahead of the concern you should have had for your youngest child. Uh, you may have been encouraged in your fear that your children would be removed from you, but that in itself was a choice that placed your interests above theirs. In your favour, you have no relevant previous convictions, and it is clear from the very careful and thorough pre-sentence report that you now recognise the extent of your guilt, and you are genuinely remorseful. You've had a difficult life. As the author of the report observes, it is likely that your ultimate punishment is learning to come to terms with your role in Jacob's death. You've also lost your older son, who has been removed and adopted. I take into account the overarching guidance in relation to sentencing those with mental disorders. Though it is possible that you may have had PTSD at the time of the offences, I do not consider that this impaired your ability to make rational choices. I nevertheless take into account your mental health and the diagnosis of PTSD in considering the effect of the sentence upon you. The minimum sentence that I can impose that reflects the gravity of this offence, taking into account all of the factors I've set out, is one of ten years' imprisonment. The practical effect of my sentence is that you will spend half that time in custody before being released on licence, and you may then be recalled if you breach the terms of the licence. Count four, cruelty to a child, under section 1.1 of the Children and Young Persons Act 1933, you also fall to be sentenced for the offence of child cruelty. 
the jury found that you were aware, ought to have been aware, of the risk of serious physical harm, which you acknowledged by your plea to this offence. At the very least, you failed to protect Jacob, leaving him with Jake Drummond to be subjected to the very significant force used in the incident that led to his death. You entered a plea of guilty to this offence shortly after you'd left the witness box. Jacob needed medical aid. You failed to provide it, and you were aware at the time that Jacob's health might be at risk if he was not provided with help. You willfully neglected Jacob, choosing to ignore the warnings and neglecting to seek help, medical or otherwise, when you should have been aware of the threat to your son's well-being and his accumulating injuries and deteriorating health. The mitigating features are as before. The offence is part of the underlying facts, which also found count three. The prosecution submit this is a category B1 offence with a starting point of six years and a range of four to eight years. I agree. The sentence will be one of six years to run concurrently with count three. In each of your cases, if the statutory surcharge applies, then the appropriate orders can be drawn up. That is the sentence of the court. You can go down.